become a patron at www.patreon.com forward slash golden era bookworm for hard to find books scans of rare photos and articles on the golden era of bodybuilding hi everybody golden era bookworm here and after briefly introducing alvin lee in a previous video i decided to talk more about this very unique and almost forgotten bodybuilder from the silver era Alvin Lee is, as far as I know, the first Asian American bodybuilder that competed in the United States against the Silver Era legends such as John Farbotnik, Malcolm Brenner and Tommy Kono, who was of Japanese descent and started off as a weightlifter prior to competing in bodybuilding. So after actually doing a Your Physique review showcasing Alvin Lee's physique in some photos, I did get some fan requests. And I mean, it is rather obvious um, why. I mean, you can really see how aesthetically uh, built he was. I mean, he's, his physique is not over the top. It's very much like a Frank Zane physique, but rewinding the clock, of course, back to the Silver Era. He's got that armor-plated chest, really nice rounded deltoids, and, and really well-shaped arms. It's not over the top. He looks athletic and aesthetic. And after doing a bit of research, I was rather impressed with Alvin Lee's achievements in the early 50s all the way up to the 60s. He was, he was a very successful bodybuilder, believe it or not, during the Silver Era. And I'm going to talk a little bit about him in this video. Now, Alvin Lee began competing in physique shows as early as 1950. And a quick search on musclememory.com, which is an excellent website, an excellent reference for searching information, especially about the competitive history of bodybuilders, it reveals that he was rather active and very successful as a competitive bodybuilder during the 1950s and early 1960s. Although the list in Muscle Memory website is not as extensive, it, it's, uh, I mean, it doesn't have everything. I've even found, for example, rare photos of Alvin Lee competing in the professional Mr. America competition of 1954, which is not listed here. Um, but it's the, the photo is actually shown here. And this photo was actually shared with me by famous golden era photographer, John Ballack. And this photo particularly was taken by Hal Stevens. And you can see how well proportioned Alvin Lee in the, is in this photo. He's got that wonderful square chest, those capped deltoids just burst out. He's not huge, but he's beautifully aesthetically built. Proportions are just so obvious in a physique like this. Very streamlined, very pleasing to look at. Alvin Lee was able to develop this very aesthetic physique. I have had comments again from viewers saying that he had an Apollo-like physique. That's the best way to describe him. Much like Vince Gironda's physique, or as I mentioned earlier, Frank Zane of the Golden Era. And I have to agree, he had amazing lines, great definition. That's really, really obvious. He had such an aesthetically pleasing physique that he was able to capture the AAU Mr. Pacific Coast title in 1951 and the AAU Northern California show in 1952. His transformation was rather impressive too. At the beginning of his bodybuilding journey, it is reported that Alvin's measurements were as follows. He had a neck of 13 inches, chest of 34 inches, an upper arm of only 10 and a half inches, waist was 28 and a half, his thighs were 17 inches, his calves were only 11 and a quarter inches, and he only weighed 102 pounds. However, after weight training for three solid years, his weight shot up to 147 pounds, which is a 45 pound increase. His chest had grown to a rugged 45 inches while his arms were 16 inches. He also sported a trim 25 and a half inch waist, which gave him an almost 20 inch difference between his chest and waist, which according to the author at the time was one of the largest differences recorded during the silver era and gave him a wonderful V tapered look as is obvious in these physique shots. He also sported 22 inch thighs and 15 inch calves. Such measurements gave Alvin that aesthetic and athletic look as his body was proportionately flawless. Alvin's training routine was nothing out of the ordinary. His favorite exercise was the incline bench press, which he feels contributed to the development of his high thick pectorals. And you can clearly see that he's got those high thick square pectorals and they're rather, rather deep. 
he followed that regular set system at the time that was used and practicing anywhere from two to five sets of each exercise. While his routine varied from time to time, it was generally a full body workout to ensure that all the muscles of the body were worked as a unit and he included a lot of leg and lower back work. This again is one of the secrets of the Silver Era Legends and I will be dedicating a video on how Silver Era bodybuilders strengthened their lower backs in a video in the future. Alvin's favorite routine was as follows. For legs, he would perform the leg curl using the iron boots at the time. Now, of course, one can use a leg curl machine or a dumbbell. He performed squats. And for the chest, he would perform the bench press, as I mentioned, the incline bench press, actually. Dumbbell flies, the flat bench press as well. And for the back, he would perform lat machine pull downs, all kinds of cable work for the upper back, chins behind the neck as well. For the deltoids, he would perform the press behind the neck, as well as dumbbell presses, standing front laterals. And for the arms, he would perform curls, like barbell curls. And as for the triceps, he would perform dips. And he would finish off his workouts, usually with deadlifting. Looking over this routine, we can see that Alvin used the flushing system of training, where you basically train each body part separately in one whole workout. So you would do all the exercises for the legs first, then the chest, then the back. That's what the flushing system is, grouping all the exercises for each body part together and then going from one body part to the other. Um, he also used a lot of different apparatuses, such as the pulleys, so cables, etc., the lap machine, iron boots, the incline bench, etc. Alvin trained in this full body routine three times a week and would vary the reps. This is very, very important. On the Monday, for example, he would perform 10 repetitions. On Wednesday, he would perform 20 repetitions or a bit more, and on Friday, move back to performing 10 repetitions. So, you could see that he would use on one day very high reps and on the other two days would perform just 10 reps or so. He followed this kind of routine because his ideal, his ideal in bodybuilding was great muscularity and definition and to have this Apollo-like physique. That was his kind of idea and it was based on his idol, of course, Steve Reeves. His idea of the perfect bodybuilder was Steve Reeves. He was not necessarily looking at developing a bulky Herculean look. He was never eager in gaining too much bulk or to develop a Vulcan Herculean look like that of Reg Park or Marvin Eda. And therefore he did not incorporate using heavy weights for lower reps or cheating. Now, if you're interested in developing an aesthetic Apollo-like physique like that of Steve Reeves or Vince Gironda, or of course, like that of Alvin Lee, I have many eBooks available on my website, www.goldenerabookum.com, highlighting their specific training methods, that is, that of Steve Reeves and Vince Gironda, to help you achieve your goals. So I do hope you have enjoyed this look at this very, very unique bodybuilder, Alvin Lee, the first Asian American bodybuilder that preceded Tommy Kono, and was rather successful during the Silver Era. If you have enjoyed this video, please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't done so, and leave me your comments. To support the channel, please donate via PayPal, become a Patreon, or visit my respective websites for out of print books um, that are now available as ebooks or old school apparel. I have just launched a new series of vintage golden era t-shirts based on Arnold's original design. My wife kindly recreated the design and we have it now on print on, of course, on tanks and t-shirts available on my Teespring store. Details are given below in the description. Thanks again for watching. This is the golden era bookworm saying bye for now. To support your favorite YouTube channel, please visit teespring.com slash store slash golden era bookworm for merchandise, including t-shirts, hoodies, face masks, phone cases, and much, much more. Once again, at teespring.com slash store slash golden era bookworm. To take full advantage of my collaboration with Old School Labs, please visit their website and choose from their marvelous range of supplements using my code bookworm12. And for an entertaining look at the history of bodybuilding's supplement industry, I would highly recommend watching Subs the Movie, which I have collaborated in, available at Amazon Prime and Vimeo.